you can define acids and bases by, well, uh, uh, performing an operation to see what they actually have as properties, and you can also define them theoretically. That's very important, actually, to, to figure out what's actually going on in solution so we can make good predictions about what's going to happen when we mix chemicals together. And there are some definitions that have been around for a long time, and some of them that had to have been modified along the way to be able to uh, come up with some really uh, current ideas about what we think acids and bases actually do at the molecular level. Operational definition. If you can perform an operation to define an acid or a base, well, that, that helps you to determine what they are. Like, for instance, uh, an acid is going to be able to act with active metals to form hydrogen gas, H2 gas. They're going to turn blue litmus paper red. Those are, that's an operational definition, then, of an acid. A base would be that it turns red litmus paper blue, and that uh, bases neutralize acids. Those are operational definitions. But then at the theoretical level, a guy named Savante Arrhenius came up with something a long time ago because Arrhenius was genius. He kind of basically said, you know what, things dissociate in solution and they form electrolytes and charged particles. And he came up with all those great ideas to be able to describe solutions. And he said, acids, you know what I'm thinking acids have in them? Acids have hydrogen in them all the time, so I believe that an acid does this. An acid dissociates into solution to increase the concentration of H-positive ion. That's a really good definition. It was a really good definition. And he said bases, well I think if bases do this, they dissociate into, into solution to form hydroxide ion or increase hydroxide ion concentration. And everybody said, so I guess what you're saying is that acids have H-positive in them and bases have OH-negative. Yeah, sure. Problem? You know, I just told you before in terms of definition of acids and bases that large charge cations like iron, iron 3 positive, are actually acidic. So when you take iron, ni iron 3 nitrate here, or ferric nitrate, and you put that into solution, that's an acid. Now, Arrhenius' definition doesn't actually describe what's happening here because of the fact that there's no H positive in there. And then, Sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, is a base. It's actually a weak base, but it's kind of a strong weak base. We'll talk about that. But the idea is that this, this chemical right here, being a, a base, doesn't have OH negative in it. So Arrhenius' definition doesn't really work conceptually very well for those types of chemicals. And we need a, a, a type of definition that works better. And that's where Braun said Lowry. Look, at it. it took two guys to be able to actually uh, defeat Arrhenius' definition. And we had to hang on to that one for a long time because, well, even though it wasn't great, it was functional. But this guy right here, well, this, these guys right here, Braun said Lowry, came up with a definition of acids and bases that simply said this. And since, by the way, hydrogen ion, H positive, really is hydrogen atom minus an electron. That's just a proton left over. H positive is a proton. And so the definition of a Bronsted-Lowry acid is it's a proton donor. And a base is a proton acceptor. So how does that work? Well, I'll show you some equations.